So, you know, if you look up the word untamed in the dictionary, you will find the following definition, not domesticated or otherwise controlled. And for our next guest, untamed is a way of being. In fact, it is the only way of being. Please welcome New York Times bestselling author, Glennon Doyle, the author of Untamed. Welcome to Picks, 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 Picks. Oh my goodness. It is so Hello. it is so wonderful to see you. I, I follow you. I feel like I am your friend uh, because I've, I've read your book and I follow you on Instagram. And so this can this be our unofficial morning meeting because I know you greet your your followers with a morning meeting. It's morning meeting time. <laughs> Here we are. So Glennon, I wonder, um, you know, I, I called on my friend Webster to give me the definition of untamed. But for those of you who haven't had a chance to read the book yet, what is your definition? of untamed? Mm. Well, you know, the truth is that we are born these kind of wild, unique selves, and we have a good, a few good years of childhood where we're just all feeling and intuition and imagination. And then over time, we're socially conditioned, right? We start to act as we should instead of as we are. And so it took me 45 years to become a woman who has just stopped trying to be good so I can be free. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. To go back to being the person I was before the world told me who to be. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And there the anecdote behind this, which is how you open the book, uh, Untamed comes from a cheetah that you and your your daughters uh, observed. I'll just leave it at that. But one of the first pages in your book says, what would you do if you trusted yourself? Notice I have an autographed copy. I borrowed it from my neighbor. Um, because I didn't have, Amazon was not cooperating with me. But so, so what would you do if you, if you trusted yourself? What is your, your message to our viewers who I think re that, that really resonates, you know, go back to your child, but childhood, what can you tell our viewers about, you know, what if they did trust themselves? What would happen? Well, I mean, as women, I think over time, we are taught not to trust ourselves. We're taught not to trust our bodies, our hunger, our ambition, our feelings all of it, you know, and, and I think that, that we end up feeling controlled, absolutely controlled. And what I have learned is you can't, you can love yourself or you can control yourself, but you can't do both because love requires trust. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. So, you know, for me, it came down to having to make a huge decision about whether I was going to leave a broken marriage and pursue the great love of my life or stay in a broken marriage and abandon myself. And for the first time, I abandoned everyone else's expectations of me and honored myself. And my whole life changed in that decision. And, and I might say that in doing so, that that trajectory played itself out in your words because you've been very open and honest about your life uh, uh, in, in your previous books. And I, I've I say I'm very transparent on this show. The quotation I live by is what other people think of me is none of my business. And on my best day, I follow that to a T. And on my worst day, you know, I'm, I'm throwing a rugby ball against a, a brick wall. But this brings me to your, your marriage. Uh, you are married to soccer player Abby Wambach. I love that you know nothing about so the soccer. Um, I can't wait till I can teach you about the rugby. Here you are. In the book, you talk about the moment you laid eyes on Abby and you said, there she is. Mm -hmm. um, and you were following the voice inside of you. Previous to this, you were married to a man for many years and had three mm -hmm. children with that man. So you look at Abby across this room and you say, there she is. And that sort of changes your whole life. So how do we, how do we follow that voice? How do we trust that voice inside of us when we have that there she is moment? And the she could be not necessarily another human. It might just be an opportunity or something we observe in our everyday lives? You know, when I, when I had that moment, when I looked at Abby and, and heard the words, there she is, I thought it was about Abby, but I think it was me. Mm -hmm. I think what I felt was myself rising up that I had buried underneath all the shoulds and expectations that other people told me I should be. And so what I hope for all women is that they have a there she is moment. I mean, I have friends who have there she is moments when they write mm -hmm. or when they run mm -hmm. or when they have their quiet time or when they're with a the best friend. But I just want for every woman that each day they have a moment where they feel their soul rise up you know, where they can see themselves because we get so lost in our roles as women that we forget that we are souls and we need to see ourselves. I love that. So that there she is, that she was actually you 
not your partner, which I think is something we can all really aspire to. So the book is filled, filled with uh, short essays, and they're, they're bite-sized. I love them. Um, and one of them is called Talks, and you're talking to your daughter, Tish, as your younger self, and then as your 40-something-year-old self. And I think we've all been asked the question, what would you tell your 16-year-old self? Or what, you know, so so how, how do we achieve that level of understanding with the people in our lives? You know, with your daughter, Tish, you were, you were saying, you know, if this, if this other classmate of yours doesn't like you, well, it's okay, you know? So, so how do we apply that to our everyday lives? How do we sort of unlearn the things that we've been taught and think about our situations in the present day? You know, as Marisol Castro, this 46-year-old woman who's been, knock me down 10 times, I'll get up 11, but what, how, how, do I, how do I bring that to my everyday life and how do our viewers bring their, that to their everyday lives? Well, my favorite conversation in that part that you're talking about was when Tish came home and she said, mom, Chase wants me to join all of these clubs at school and I don't want to. And I said, okay, then don't. <laughs> and she said, but I don't want to disappoint him. Hmm. And this is the lesson that it took me 45 years to learn, but it was so beautiful to be able to say it to my daughter. And I said, honey, your job for the rest of your life is to disappoint as many people as it takes so that you don't disappoint yourself. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's, that's what I want. I want to raise little girls who don't ever have to untame because they never got tamed in the first right, place. Right? right, right. Because they learn to be true to themselves and listen to that voice inside. And so that the life that unfolds for them will be one that they recognize. Glenn, and I want to bring in the rest of the team because I truly do believe that everything that you say in your book and in your, on your Instagram resonates not only just with me, women, but with men as well. Um, team, say hi, hi to Glennon. Hello. Uh, Glennon. Uh, hi. Hi to the team. It's in, you bring up a point because I remember a gazillion years ago when my then fiance proposed to me, in two seconds I said, I can disappoint this man's life or disappoint my own, and I disappointed my own. And it took me 12 years to undo all of that. Where were you 12 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> I doing, needed... the same, doing the same thing, Marisol, doing the same thing. <laughs> but uh, so here, here's the gang. Oh my gosh, Glenn, you were, uh, I don't know, you, know if you knew this, but you were a third member of our family for like two <laughs> or three weeks. My uh, wife was <laughs> quoting your book to the point where I was like, honey, like this is this is like obsessive now. Like it's you need to get a hold of yourself. She would every single thing I did, brushing my teeth. She was quoting. She you influenced her so much. And my wife is a is a huge proponent of everything, therapy, and just learning from people and and listening to people. And she was so taken by your book. I don't have a question. I just wanted to just blow smoke. <laughs> so she is obsessed right, with you. Glenn, and I have a question. Do you feel that for all the time that you spent in the past, right? Did you feel that that was wasted time or was a journey to get to where you are? Because I think some people might look at themselves and say, oh my gosh, I wasted 20 years of my life. Mm -hmm. What do you say to them? Oh, I wouldn't change a minute of it. And I've been through the ringer. I mean, I was, I became bulimic when I was 10 years old and didn't get sober till I was 25. And then was in a marriage that ended and every bit of it has made me exactly who I am today. Mm -hmm. I sometimes think people who have walked through the fire yeah. And are on the other side, they're always my favorite people. Mm -hmm, right. right. All of it changes us. And um, no, I mean, I think things feel so bright right now because they were dark before. And I, um, I remember after my marriage ended, somebody said, um, are you sad that you worked so hard and your marriage failed? And I thought, oh, my God, I've never in a million years thought of that marriage yeah. as a failure. Mm -hmm. It changed both of us. Yep. We had three yep. beautiful children. We healed. It was a wild success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was all part of the journey. Yep. Yeah. All part of that road. Oh, Glennon Doyle, you're my hero for today and forevermore. Thank you so much for joining us. Glennon's book, Untamed, is available in stores now. Thank you so much. And, you know, shout out to Abby, too. Tell her we say hi. And please put the cap on the toothpaste. Close the cabinet doors so you can stop giving her Ajita. Folks at home, read, her, read your book or follow her on Instagram and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I'll tell her you're on her side. The intricacies of marriage. Uh, thank you so much, Glennon. Appreciate Bye, it. Glennon.